99% of the problems you are going through right now can be solved with increasing your testosterone levels. Now, you've probably seen so many videos on testosterone, how to boost it, what's the signs of low and high testosterone, and you click this video thinking either two things. One, you already think you have high testosterone and you're just watching extra videos in it, or you might think you have low testosterone and you are worried. If you are watching this video and you believe you have high testosterone levels, then don't be so sure. Because this happened to me about six, seven months ago. I thought I had high testosterone levels since I was making videos on it. I knew everything about testosterone, but I was missing one crucial part of my testosterone boosting process and it severely decreased my testosterone levels and I was stuck on six, seven hundred nanograms. And you might think, well, Arthur, that's a lot but it could go way higher. So I put my ego aside, I put my arrogance aside, and I was like, why am I not achieving the results I want to? I'm doing all of this, so what am I missing? And I analyzed and I fixed that problem. So just a quick heads up before you just start getting into the video. Now, there are many, many signs that your body will give you that you have low testosterone, but these three signs are the strongest. So even if you have one of these signs, I would be concerned because these three are the biggest, most dangerous physical and mental signs that you have low androgen activity. Maybe it's because of stress, maybe because of sleep, maybe because of diet, I'm not sure. But this video is not to address the root cause of you having low testosterone. This is not to try to tackle the problem. This is just to address if you have low testosterone or not. Now, before we get into the top three things, I want to start with a story because I believe it's relevant into making my other points. And that is, I remember when I was watching a lot of videos on testosterone. After some digging, let's say, I found that your crushing grip strength on the dynamometer is quite an accurate representation of your total androgen status. So I remember when I found that out, I quickly ordered on Amazon. I had an Amazon account at the time. And it came to my door maybe a week or two later since the delivery was all the way from china or some shit so it didn't take like a day and i was so excited for it the mail comes in i'm ripping the fucking package open right and then i get it i'm right here opening my package and then i hold the thing i press start it says zero kg so i'm like yes it works i can finally determine if i have high testosterone and then guess what I think you know what happens next. I squeeze it as hard as I can, all of my strength. I actually started seeing stars after doing it. Then I look onto the score, 51 kg. If you right now search up average grip strength for males, maybe my age, 15 to 18, it's gonna show you some bullshit like 40 kg, but that is the average. This does not mean that this is the normal amount, right? And 50 kg is not terrible, it's not horrible. I'm sure if you take it to a school, a lot of people will get less than that. I was doing so many things to boost my testosterone, well, I thought I was, but it was still stuck on average. I was just very confused. Then I started coping to myself, oh, it's because I'm a kid. When I'm an adult, it could be way higher. And this is around the same time where a lot of people will comment on my eyes, saying there's loads of bags under them. I always had very red eyes. And I was starting to question, maybe, just maybe, I might have shit sleep. So, I went to the doctors, got myself checked out, and yes, I had a lot of nasal congestion, which basically fucks up your sleep. And when you fuck up your sleep, you fuck up your REM sleep, which is basically where you produce testosterone. So, I had something very similar to sleep apnea. And still to this day, six months later, it's still not fully gone, but a lot of it is fixed and then my sleep got way better and i started feeling way better i had more of the high testosterone symptoms and i started squeezing 70 kg per day on average on the dynamometer so what i tried to tell you guys is don't be so sure now before we get into the video i have a free discord server for young men on self-improvement so we discuss about testosterone self-improvement muscle growth gym so go join that it's in the top link in description first sign that you have low testosterone is your confidence. Now, I've seen, and other people have seen, their massive jump in confidence as soon as they started to 
boost their testosterone levels. Now, testosterone makes you fearless. Think about it from an evolutionary perspective. Testosterone was given to us so we could compete and find mates. And how do we find mates? We do risky behaviors, right? We killed the saber-toothed tiger, right? When we were hunters and gatherers, we'll kill animals that were dangerous to kill, right? They could have eaten us, basically fell off the wild. And how were you supposed to do that if you were a coward? So if you were a coward, you'd be getting no play, no pussy, and you wouldn't be doing the risky behaviors. So testosterone was given to us, so it would make us fearless doing these things. Don't get me wrong, they still were fearful. That is normal, but it just reduces it. So bring it back to modern day period, you would be less scared to look at a man in the eye and shake his hand if you had higher testosterone. And not only that, you would have less social anxiety. You would be more assertive. That's why having low confidence is a very, very big sign of low testosterone. All right, number two is a low sex drive. Now, testosterone is directly responsible for your sex drive and it makes sense. Testosterone given to us to mate, find a mate. We need sex drive to pursue the mate. So if you have low testosterone, that means that your body does not want to pursue that mate. Remember this, right? Your body is prioritizing either survival or reproduction. Survival is when your cortisol is through the roof, you're trying to fight that animal off, you are in survival mode. Your body tries to keep as much energy as possible. That's why when you have high cortisol levels, it's so hard to lose fat because your body is in survival mode. It's trying to keep on to that fat because it subconsciously thinks you don't have any food. So it's trying to survive. However, when you go into reproduction mode, that's when these hormones like IGF-1, testosterone, estradiol is higher because your body realizes, oh shit, I'm comfortable. So now I need to find a mate to reproduce with. So it starts giving you all of these things like testosterone, which in turn gives you sex drive. So if you don't really have a high sex drive, you don't get random erections often, you don't really feel horny at all, never have morning words, then there's a good chance that you have low testosterone levels. Number three, and finally, is your energy. So think of the days where you had two, three hours of sleep, you were staying up, playing that game, you were at the sleepover with your friends. Think of the energy you had when you got up and then think of the energy you had after nice eight, nine, 10 hours sleep. It's such a big difference. And one of the reasons why it's such a big difference is testosterone. When you have low testosterone, you are constantly tired. You don't want to do anything. You just want to lay down on your couch and you can't be asked for the gym. Going to the gym is a drag. Even with high testosterone, you're not going to really enjoy lifting weights, especially if you're lifting hard, but you still have that motivation to keep pushing. When you have low testosterone, you do not want to do anything other than relax. So yeah, that has been the end of the video. Join the free Discord server if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.